All right, sweet. So now we're going to show you Bootstrapper, and I'm going to turn the controls over to Daniel because uh, between my college job and creating courses, I actually have done about this much of the coding <laughs> on Greater Commons, and Daniel's been the one who's architected the back end and put it all together. So um, Daniel and Shin and Juan and Aaron have been front end. But uh, yeah, let's hear it, man. Turn the controls over to you. Bootstrapper, how do we use it? So yeah, Bootstrapper manages all of the Greater Commons code base for you. Um, so it will it'll deal with making sure that your own machine has Greater Commons on it, all the code. It'll deal with uh, turning it all on. Um, it's got some flags for clearing it out if you accidentally make, if you completely mess up your system. It can it can clear it all out for you and, and get you started back up fresh. Um, you do, however, need to in have installed. Uh, some stuff. So if you go to the Bootstrapper uh, repo on GitLab, uh, down below, there's a, a list of prerequisites. So you need to have Go installed um, for back end. You need to have Node.js installed for front end. You need to have uh, Goa installed, which you can do that just by running this command if you've got Go installed. Um, you need to have uh, Google the Google Cloud tool installed. Uh, on your machine, and then you need to run this command to make sure it's got uh, the ability to use Go with its uh, tools. Um, you need to have dep installed, which involves running this command if you've got Go installed. And then you need to have Python 2.7 installed, some, some sort of Python 2.7. Um, if you've got Python 3 and 2 installed on your machine, you can set this environment variable to the full path to your Python 2 and it will uh, use that. Um, otherwise, it just looks for the word Python in your path. Yeah. Um, so if you once you have all of these dependencies set up, the Bootstrapper will work for you and will uh, and can manage your code. Um, to use it, just after you've cloned Bootstrapper using the standard uh, git clone, uh, you uh, can cd into the Bootstrapper's folder. And if you run Bootstrapper-h, uh, it'll give you a list for H for help. This will give you a list of every uh, flag that Bootstrapper takes, and it's a rather large list. But only like two, of, you only need two of them for everyday use. So, so there's there's a lot of them. Yeah, cool. But, I was just checking them out. Yeah, the the I, I only ever use B and uh, M myself. So. There's, there's lots of other ones that can be helpful uh, in various circumstances, but for the most part, those are the only two that you will actually need. Um, so to get started, you can just run Bootstrapper by itself um, without any flags. Um, tell it yes to continue, um, and it will first thing Bootstrapper will do is check if there's any updates to Bootstrapper itself that needs to be done. Um, then it'll ask you SSH or HTTPS, um, go for whichever one you've got set up on your machine with GitLab. However, please note that uh, you're going to need to have HTTPS set up either way, just because of some uh, downsides to a couple of the tools. Um, I've got them both set up, so I can just use SSH, but if you only have HTTPS set up, you can just use HTTPS. Um, so SSH for me. How do you set up HTTPS on GitLab? That's just username and password. That's Doesn't, doesn't and that password. prompt you and then it just remembers that? It should, yes. Yeah, okay. So, so you, you may have to tell Git to, you have to say, uh, get, configure Git to remember the password. Yeah. But, in, um, and if you've got two factor authentication installed on GitLab, you've yeah. got to get, you've got to get a bypass password instead of your standard oh, password. Cool. cool. Um, so yeah, that's once you, if you just run Bootstrapper by itself, it will download all the repos uh, needed to run Greater Commons. So everything needed to run Greater Commons was, is now on my machine. Um, it does not clone anything that's not needed for Greater Commons, so all the little extra repos that may be abandoned or uh, archived or whatever, it Bootstrapper doesn't bother with. So, so at this point, having just run bootstrapper.exe, I now have the entire code base on my machine. And I just want to say that once you've gotten Bootstrapper down to your machine, whether you use GoGit, you could use GoGit for it too, right? You yes. said Git clone, yeah. G-I-T clone. But uh, either way, once you get it on your machine, you go build it, you go build it, and then that turns it into an executable. So Daniel's on Windows, so he got bootstrapper.exe, right? Yeah. But if you're on Linux or Mac, 
you're going to do a dot forward slash bootstrapper to run it, not the exe part. Maybe that's self-evident. <laughs> I just want to make sure that you know it's not only for Windows and you're using mm -hmm. that go build process. I'm not sure if that yeah, was yeah. mentioned. No, I'm not sure either. Because um, we recorded this video once before and we were like, oh, let's do that again because the recording messed up. Yep. Um, if you are on Linux and Mac and you run into a problem with Bootstrapper, please let us know. All the devs that are in this room are all Windows developers. So we've got one guy who works Linux for, uh, normally and uh, he, he, he tells us... Uh, he, he tells us about problems with Bootstrapper every once in a oh, while. Right, so, right. so yeah, please let us know if you run into any problems on Linux or Mac, uh, and we'll get that fixed up for you. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, is that it about Bootstrapper? Uh, for this video, I think. Okay, we, cool. We can get to actually using it next All right, video. sweet. See you in the next video.